Bingo, three o'clock rock. I'm Jake Bidell on Think Tech, and this is Think Tech Tech Talks. That's because we talk about tech here on Think Tech Tech Talks. Say that five times fast, will you? Oh, I'd rather talk about rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> That's Steve Bussinger. He is the president, uh, president, professor president <laughs> of, um, of meteoric, mm, atmospheric science. That's correct. At SOAS, the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology at UH Manoa. And Paul Sin, he's an inventor, and he invented something called Rainbow Stop. And we're here to talk about Rainbow Stop. Rainbow Stop is an app, right, that you pull down on your computer, your cell phone, and it, it tells you a lot about rainbows. And, you know, some people really want to know a lot about rainbows. But before we get to that, let's talk about what a rainbow is from, from a scientific point of view. I've been waiting for this conversation all my life. What <laughs> is a rainbow? I think it's the weather's way of saying aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's what a rainbow is. And uh, rainbows basically are caused by sunlight coming from behind you and shining onto a rain uh, shaft. Mm -hmm. And then all the individual raindrops collectively providing tiny little prisms that separate the colors and, and then paint this rainbow on the sky. It's a, it's a gorgeous phenomenon. Gorgeous phenomenon, and plenty of them here in Hawaii. Although well, that's what I want to talk about. Okay, go for it. Well, I, we are the rainbow capital of the world. We have more rainbows and better rainbows than any place else. And, and that's something that uh, th there's a real opportunity scientifically to study that more. In fact, I, I was approached by a guy from France, a professor in France, who wanted to, to come to Hawaii and do a sabbatical and study rainbows. And it kind of gave me an idea, like, why don't we do a citizen science thing where we get people to take pictures of rainbows with their phone and send them to our website, and then we can catalog it, the place, the time, the location, and from that, we can, we can get a climatology of rainbows. Ah, what a wonderful idea. And then it they spurs do make people good photographs, on. for yeah, sure. Yeah, they do. And it, it makes people uh, go out and look for them. Or if they see one, they go, hey, I'll send that in. Yeah. And it's a research project that I'm initiating at the University of Hawaii. Good. Yeah. So just for reference, if anybody wanted to send in a picture of a rainbow to your site, what, what's the name of the site? Rainbowstop.com. Ah, rainbowstop.org. No, Sorry, that dot org. org. Yeah, oh, oh, org. Okay, really important. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know what can, what conditions do I have to have? You know, rainbows that happen everywhere. I, I can't like turn 360 and find lots of rainbows. Certain conditions have to exist in order to make it happen. What are those conditions? Yeah, and that, that's where Hawaii is special. Uh, you need to have rain in one part of the sky and you need to have sunshine in another part of the sky. So what you really need is a small, compact cloud that is basically doing a, a, a dump and, and, and producing a lot of precipitation. Just in one place, a in, small In one place yeah. so that it doesn't block the sun out everywhere. Ah, and it can't be heavy rain. It's got to be the special well, Hawaiian rain. It, it actually, that, that, that's okay. It can be heavy rain. It can be light rain. Uh, if there's a lot of droplets, you'll get a really nice bow. If, if the droplets are bigger, uh, the bow does get a bit brighter, so heavy rain is good. That, that can be fine. Sometimes I see uh, rainbows that go from, you know, across the whole sky. They start apparently on the ground. They go right across in a big arc, you know, broad area covered, and then they go back to the ground again. That's really an ideal rainbow. That's the full tilt Magilla. That's the, right. the full Monty, as they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you achieve that, or how does nature achieve that, in lieu of a little wee rainbow, which is only in a small arc, and it isn't touching the ground on either side? Uh, it depends on the distribution of the rain and the sunlight. Sometimes the sun is a little blocked on one side, or sometimes uh, you've got your 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 little way from the mountains. The mountains are producing the rain, which is another way that Hawaii produces lots of rainbows. The whole, the, the the rain shaft is hitting the mountain, and so you can only see a short rainbow up on the mountain. Uh, if the rain is closer to you, then you get the full full rainbow. If you're kind of immersed in the rain but but it's not raining too hard where you are because otherwise it blocks the sunlight uh -huh. that's the best for getting a double rainbow one other point steve and that's this you know 
in, in this 21st century, we have more development, we have more, I, I, pollution may not be the right word, but we have more non-natural things happening in our very natural state of Hawaii. And I am wondering, be interested in your thought about it, that the number of rainbows is actually diminishing because of the effect of human habitation here with a million point three people. <laughs> that could be something that we study. Once we get people to send in the rainbows, then we can study that. It's rainbowstop.org. Okay. Correct. Send it into Steve Businger, B U S I N G E R, mm -hmm. and he will put it in his database and we'll see the result. Fabulous. Now, you like rainbows, Paul. I'm a rainbow man. Rainbow man? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah, I saw that. You are the rainbow man. You call yourself a rainbow man. It's a symbol of a rainbow it's man a, I designed. It's a petroglyph on your yeah. arm, yeah. And this is a stand for <laughs> moonbow man. Moonbow. If we have a moonbow back there now, let's take a look at a moonbow. There it is. That's a moonbow. What in the world is a moonbow? It's, Steve, uh, wait, Steve, can't do this. <laughs> ah, well, um, a moonbo is uh, where the moonlight is causing the refraction and producing the, the bow. So same process. It's, it's exactly the same process. And actually, it is caused by sunlight because a moonbo happens when you have a full moon. And the full moon is reflecting the sunlight. So in of course, essence, it's sunlight. they're both sunlight. They're both sunlight. And our eyes have evolved to love sunlight. Yeah, we don't see as many moonbows as we do rainbows. Huh? Well, the, you only, only once a month is a moon totally full. And so when there's a new moon, you're not going to have a, a moonbow. <laughs> so, so already you're... Uh, reducing the potential quite a lot. You know, this is like this is like the the, gr the green flash. You know, as as the sun goes down at the end of the day, and then everybody says, if you watch it really carefully, you'll see the green flash just as it drops below the horizon. I don't know if that's true or not, because I personally true. have never seen the green flash. I will send you a photo. Jay, <laughs> really? No. Yeah, he has a very beautiful picture. <laughs> oh, that yeah. is something very special. It does happen. Wow, I would love but to see that. But you can also that. go blind by staring at the sun, so oh, you have to oh, be a little careful. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can so, but a moonbow is kind of, to me, like a green flash, because you don't see it much, right. and you're happy to catch it. That's you know? right. Yeah. yeah. So back to Paul. Okay. So you're the rainbow man and also okay. the moonbow man, both. You have a you split, wanna, split personality, as it were. You want to hear how I got the idea for rainbow? Well, first uh, I want to I want to just establish that you're an inventor. Yes. And you spend your life thinking at two o'clock in the morning about inventions. Am I right? Yeah, not particularly two o'clock, <laughs> but all day long, as long as I'm unconscious. And you're a, you're a, you're a, <laughs> me too, and and you're an engineer, yeah. Yes. And that helps. Yeah. Okay. So with your engineering and your creativity, you invent... Tell us some of the things you've invented in your life. I should say next time about what I invented. Well, in we don't have time for that now. How about the crystal putter? Oh, crystal putter. You, they can check uh, my uh, another website, idhunter.com. I have a few items I invented, yeah. Okay. But today I want to talk about... Uh, Rainbow stop. Rainbow stop, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rainbow stop is not only an app. Actually, uh, we're going to have a sign like this and put uh, park and um, beaches where people can pull their cars and ah. watch the rainbow safely. Ah, ah. And um, I believe if our app is developed and a popular TV station, on weather cha weather uh, forecasting time, they can uh, tell to the audience where we're going to have a rainbow and how much chance we have. And also, newspaper has a um, forecasting section. If they can... Oh, there's a beautiful put, rainbow. Do you see that? Yeah, that's, oh, that's the Manoa. kind I was talking about. That's yeah. a, the full yeah. Monty. <laughs> Even in newspaper, they have a forecasting section, and uh, they only can put a little rainbow sign, which means forecasting rainbow. It even decorate the newspaper. Ah. That's the uh, one step, and the second step is like he said, app. You're gonna tell to the people where we're gonna have a rainbow and when and how much percent of a chance we have. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the app, 
or the computer program, whatever it may yeah. be, it's going to give me what a prognostication, a probability thing about where and when I can find a rainbow. It's it's still under development, but all the elements are there. It, the, the the sun is easy to predict. We know when the sun's going to rise and when it's going to set and how high it's going to be. Uh, and the only other thing we need to predict is where the rainfall is going to be and, and can the sun get underneath the cloud. And so we can do that with a combination of satellite photo, photos of the cloud ah, distribution ah. and radar, which gives us the rain. Ah. And then it's just an angle. And then... It's uh, automated. This all happens automated. Yeah, that part is all you get automated. get the data from NASA, maybe? Uh, uh, national, uh, the NOAA. NOAA, NOAA? Oceanographic. Sure, and, and, and then you, you have um, uh, an algorithm yeah. uh, that locates where it's likely to, the rainbow is likely to happen. But you have to make it personal. Mm. It doesn't help if you're telling a guy on Kauai that you're going to have a rainbow on the big island. Ah. So, so to make it personal, your phone knows where you are. GPS. And so the app takes all the other data and integrates it with your location and tells you, Ah, I, if I drive over to this park, I'll have a really nice view of the sky, and within 15 minutes, a rain shower is coming, and and then the, the, the sun will be out, so there's a good chance of seeing a rain. So out. it's going to send you a message, push message. Yes. And it's going to yes. say, Jay, don't you understand? <laughs> if you go to this park, you'll be able to see a rainbow. Get there. Got to go. Uh, is that right? Got to go. <laughs> that's the idea. Yeah, that's, that's fabulous. And, um, and when you get there, you will, you will see a rainbow. Yes. I, what, what's the chance know, of, of success on this? Well, is it 100%? I think, I think that, well, it, you, you know how it, the Weather Service says, okay, there's a 50% chance of yeah, rain yeah, today, yeah, okay. there's an 80% chance. So there's, sometimes there'll be greater chance and other times less chance. And, okay. and hopefully the app will give you some and idea. And it'll say something. It'll yeah. say 50, 80, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Right, and it'll, it'll, it'll let you know also which place to go to. Um, so, but let's say that a rainbow doesn't happen. You're at a park. You've got a beautiful view of the sky. <laughs> the ocean's there. I mean, it's like not a bad time. It's a good no, thing. No, <laughs> it's a good place to meditate and, and reduce your stress. I suppose the app could say that. Yep. The app could say you're at the park. I'm sorry, there's no rainbow, but this is a good time for you to meditate and reduce your stress. That's right. That's right. Here's some thoughts for meditation. <laughs> or, like Paul does, become an inventor. You know, when, when you're in a situation like that, it's a perfect place of kind of even with a rainbow present. Perfect place to invent something new <laughs> yeah yeah commune with science <laughs> yeah, yeah so how are you going to disseminate how are you going to distribute this when, when it's done through the internet and i believe uh when we uh finish a uh, perfect app i think it will bring lots of lots of lots of money to the state of hawaii how the one of the main reason i really put myself uh, in rainbow stop is we have a great chance with my lips pay for the rail oh wait a minute wait a minute that's a cliffhanger <laughs> and you know what we do when we have cliffhangers <laughs> we take a break watch this Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am your host for Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and renewable energy future. I'm so excited to be here with you to talk about some of the most important energy issues of our day. And most importantly, who can we bring together? Energy engineers, artists, musicians, accountants, advocates, Young people, who can we bring together to talk about how we can make this path together by walking and reach 100% renewable energy? Please join me Tuesdays at 1 p.m. for Power Up Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Reg Baker, the host of Business in Hawaii that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Today we were very fortunate enough to have a Dr. Miller and her service dog, Muffin. And we talked about the ADA and we covered some of the different do's and don'ts of having service dogs in your establishment uh, and how to sniff out the fakes. Please uh, tune in for Business in Hawaii on Thursday to find out all about service dogs. Aloha. Beautiful picture. Oh.
Oh, that is the full Megilla. That is, that is beautiful. Look at that. We can do that. <clears throat> so, we're going to pay for rail. Tell me how that works, Paul, because me, I want to know, and everyone wants to know. Yeah, I talk to the state, talk to the state, talk to the state. I think they don't have a year. Let me tell you how. Okay, first step, we're going to put the sign and tell the tourist there is a rainbow stop. You have a great chance of uh, finding the rainbow. Second, we have an app and tell where is the rainbow. And third step, what I haven't talked about is man-made rainbow. Ah. I want to take a boat, fire boat, yeah. to the Pearl Harbor yeah, where we yeah, have a memorial sure. and shoot the salt water maybe 200 feet high, we will make a nice rainbow. One, two, three step means all the tourists doesn't have a chance <laughs> a to run show. away from rainbow. <laughs> a rainbow show. Okay, let me like ask fireworks. you this. When tourists watch the rainbow, what do they do? Take pictures. Before that. Wow. Oh, they're all excited, yeah. sure. Take a picture. What do they do with your picture? They send it to their friends. That's a big advertise for the state. One-on-one -on -one person you know with the eyewitness. You know, what would really no be better. cool is if you could configure those fireboats in such a way so that when the water hit the clouds, it said something, like one of those uh, signs up there with it, but, you know, it said, come to Hawaii. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aloha. Yes. <laughs> is it possible? You, well, you can, you can shoot it in such a way that you get uh, parts of rainbows, right? You can shoot it to get a whole rainbow, but you can also do parts of a rainbow. And so maybe with Morse code. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? You know, dashes and dots. You can be spell it out. Jay. Oh, 2015 at Kanehoe Air Show, I took two fire trucks at the airfield. We shoot the water. I made a beautiful rainbow. You can check uh, YouTube, Man-Made Rainbow Hawaii. You can find it. Well, with man-made rainbows, can I do what we saw on the screen a minute ago, you know? The full Megillah from, from land to Ten. land all the way to yeah. perfect arch. Can I yeah. do that? Yeah. I just have a lot of, I have to have a lot of fireboats. Just one. Will do just it. one will do it. Yeah. Yeah, only so one powerful. enough. Okay. Yeah. How many how many gallons per minute? Oh uh, the shoot? boat we have uh, the state of Hawaii tried to sell the uh, name is Moku Ahi. The boat can shoot seven thousand five hundred gallons per minute, which is equal, almost equal as one hundred ten drums per minute. And they want to sell it. I tried to hold the boat to take it to the Pearl Harbor <laughs> and make a rainbow. And every year there is one point six million tourists coming to Pearl Harbor, and we have a great chance to grab them and take a picture and send them for free. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. I'm figuring out this way. If we increase about 20% more tourists, just showing the rainbow, I'm talking about subliminal perception. Okay. Equal $3 billion per year. Is that enough for the real? There's another one. See, the thing is that we could actually popularize the fact that we have... Yes. People, yeah. people know, but it's only incidental knowledge. We could really, you know, we go for it. We can push it. But let me ask you, yeah. though. You know, the composition of seawater is not the same as the composition of rainwater, right? There's all kinds of different mineral composition, mineral <laughs> elements in the seawater that you don't find in the, in the rainwater. That that's, comes down. that's true. Does that make for a different kind of rainbow? Well, what, what ends up happening, the important thing, is that... The salt in the seawater is, is uh, dissolved. Yeah. So it's not like table salt. It's actually a liquid in there. Okay. And once the water gets sprayed, the little sur there's surface tension that takes the water and turns it into small droplets. The surface tension naturally turns it into small droplets. Yeah. And at that point, 
it's perfect for making a rainbow. It makes no difference whether it's salt water or fresh water. Okay, so there's nothing ersatz about no. using salt water here. No. In fact, you know, you have more control of it because you know, that fire boat was 7,500 yeah. gallons a minute or whatever it was. Um, you can't do that on land so well. No, <laughs> it's going to be water flood. <laughs> and one more thing. He know and I know, but most of the general public doesn't know. When we look at the rainbow from the air, it's going to be round, circle. Yeah. Because there's seen? no ground. So it just falls around. And so you Complete get a circle. From, degree, from above, from yeah. an airplane. From an airplane. Get right. 360 degree bow. <clears throat> Well, I suppose you could have a small plane go up there <laughs> and ride on top of it, and that would be some incredible photography, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. trying to uh, shoot a circle rainbow by drone. So we're going to fly the drone and shoot the circle oh. rainbow video oh. clip. It's going to come up pretty soon. Yeah. At sea? This would be at sea? No, no, any place. Any place. Any place. Perfect. You're, you're, you're blending, you're marrying the technologies. Yes. <laughs> and that could come that could come on the Rainbow Stop app too, couldn't it? Yes. So you have the, yeah. the pictures come in, a celebration of rainbows. Oh yeah. In all directions. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> so, what's the business model? How much is it going to cost me to get in on this? Because you know <laughs> I want to help you raise that. What is it? Billion dollars to help rail? Actually, not raising the money. The all the tourists come in and spend the money for the state. Oh, you're increasing all, tourism, yeah, I see. Yeah, all going to get rich. How about you? Are you going to get rich? Well, you're already rich. There was that putter. <laughs> <laughs> I got more than putter. I got crab scissors, all kinds. Okay. I've been in business all my life and never have a paycheck so far. Okay, okay. all right. So, I mean, uh, so, but you will charge something. This is not a free app. Mm. We're still thinking about it. Thinking about yeah. it. Okay. This is very interesting. This is a new... As I, and I was saying, gee whiz, this could be very disruptive because you could, you could push data about all kinds of things. And you were telling me in the break, there is already a program that pushes data about likelihood of rainstorm, yeah? That's correct. And um, it, I think the app initially is going to be for free. Uh, because we're starting this as a nonprofit, and, and at the university level, we like doing research, and we don't charge the, the general public for the research we do. It's a service to the to the community. Sure, and in, so, in this case, it would be a really important one. Yeah, I think it's a nice service to the community. But you're absolutely right. I mean, the the technology is here. We 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 have information on where the rainfall is going to be falling from radar, and we can track it so we know how it's moving. And we have information on, on where the clouds are and where the sun is going to be shining. So it's, it's uh, not that difficult. You know, there's one other thing that's it's come full circle on this. You were talking about getting photographs of people of rainbows so you could do some research on, on that data. Yeah. But so if I, if I get a push, you know, and it says, Jay, there's a, you know, an 80% likelihood there's going to be a rainbow at, at this beach. Go there and take a look, okay? Now I go there, okay? And it is either there or it is not there. But you should ask me, is it there, Jay? Are you watching the rainbow? Because we need, we're doing research here at UH, yeah. and we need to know, you know, confirmation that there is or is not a rainbow where we predicted there That's would right. be one. Yeah. <laughs> that, that feeds back in to make the app better. Yeah. And it gives us the probability information that we need. But improve your predictions. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, for later on, the, when it's getting popular, maybe. TV station will put the camera where there's a lot of rainbow and forecast uh, that it on time live rainbow on TV. Sure. Like Manoa, on Pali, and wherever we have a good uh, rainbow place, we can put the camera and live get the rainbow show on TV. Yeah. 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 Uh, but this takes me to a thought, though, that sometimes, you know, when you're watering your lawn in the back of your house and you have this fine mist going up, you, you have your own rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
what you guys might consider as, a, as an accessory use here is the possibility of a rainbow machine, sort of a, a scaled-down version of those fireboats, where I can put a certain device in my backyard and know that I'm going to have a rainbow. Turn it on, and I got a rainbow. That's a great idea, and, and there, <laughs> it reminds me of, uh, I went to Los Angeles to, and I think it was the, a, a Keck uh, museum, but I, I, I can't remember for sure. But what they had was a, a dark wall, looked like lava rock, yeah. And in front of it, they had a spray, a fine misty spray, and it was done. First in land bank. <laughs> yeah, but but it produced a beautiful rainbow. It was an installation that had, had yeah. that in mind. Isn't that something? People yeah. would go for that. I know they would. There's yeah. a fellow in the Netherlands also who has a great big piece of, of plexiglass that is uh, in a in the shape of a prism, and he takes a what's like a lighthouse. Fresnel lens, super strong light, and he shines it through this prism, and he projects it on the walls of buildings <laughs> and, and white barns in the, in the countryside in the Netherlands. And, it, and it's a form of, of natural art. Natural art, yeah. yeah. Well, this is all kind of, well, natural art, isn't it? You're looking well, for the art of nature. The picture we have Fishies. on background, yeah? Huh? That's from um, this is the moon, Big the moon Island moon bowl with the lava. Yeah. Well, it's all beautiful, Paul and Steve. And if you're a rainbow man, then you're He's rainbow a scientist. Correct. Yeah. Okay, and it's a great marriage between you for this. And, you know, you start out with an app, but mm, where will this go? This is only the beginning. That's yeah. right. We're going to pay for the rail. <laughs> We're going to pay for the rail. Thank you, Steve. Thank Steve you. Steve Bushinger. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you yeah. very much for coming down, you guys. Pleasure to be here. There's a rainbow.